Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, breastfeeding, the science uh, and an art. Uh, this is session number five and a uh, very interesting session because now we're going to start with, uh, you know, breast milk, breastfeeding, art, science, you know. So you will learn about infant nutrition, uh, extremely important in child's life because that gives foundation to a child's health. Okay. So, you know, we always think that uh, only poor mothers or uneducated mothers or illiterate mothers, uh, they may need help. Or sometimes people feel that, oh, somebody who is highly educated, you know, she may need help because uh, she does not probably uh, know the culture or, you know, there are all these myths, you know. Uh, but what uh, we found that whether a woman is educated, whether she is coming from a very uh, you know uh, healthy I mean wealthiest uh, quintile or if she's poor or she's tribal urban does not matter each and every uh, woman needs uh, guidance with breastfeeding so it's important that you know we don't create this uh, you know kind of preconceived notion that uh, you know she will need help or she will know it or you know uh, every woman needs help so that's important to know uh, human milk, uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, infograph. Uh, what it has, it has different sections, okay, as you can see. And uh, it gives a kind of information about ingredient of human milk, content of human milk, okay. So we'll start with basically the rightmost corner, uh, top rightmost corner. Uh, what it has, it has all this threonine and methionine, cysteine. Those are all amino acids. Amino acids make your protein, okay? So basically it has all the amino acids which are required uh, in, in, in the diet. Uh, all of them, it has uh, essential amino acids, it has non-essential amino acids, uh, very good, very digestible protein uh, breast milk has. It's called whey protein, so very high in whey protein, uh, very easily digestible, okay? Uh, second section over here, it's your triglyceride, your, you know, all these different kind of fats, lauric acid and, you know, phosphatidylcholine and all this. These are all basically different kind of fats, okay? Uh, the kind of fat that breast milk has, it has omega-3, uh, DHA and EPA. And those fats are important for your brain, baby's brain, for eyes and for heart, okay? So, uh, and there are many studies that, as I mentioned earlier also, uh, many studies which are published uh, uh, showing that babies who take mother's milk have higher IQ. And that's because of the kind of fat that mother's milk has. When you buy formula, you know, what they do is they remove the uh, cow milk's fat. So they remove that saturated fat, which is important for brain, okay? And they put in all vegetable oils, okay? So that's, it's, kind of unnatural really so that's why i've given in one of my tutorial on complications of uh, you know formula and cow milk pro, uh, cow milk uh, about this fats uh, another thing what it has these are your macrophages so iga ig you know complements these are all basically your immune function immune cells okay uh, breast milk is a live substance so if you add any uh, microbacteria or any any uh, you know uh, bacteria or viruses it immediately gets killed okay because uh, this breast milk is a live live product uh, very 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 uh, important the macrophage macrophage are those large cells macro means large the large cells and they engulf bacteria they engulf you know a lot of your microorganisms okay uh, it has all immunoglobulin it has iga you know igm ige there's all this uh, immunoglobulins that uh, that uh, breast milk has and that's why you know even in covid you know uh, babies are protected if babies get mother's milk right uh, any type any type of infection if mother has any kind of infection in fact breast milk will increase those immune cells you know will fight against the infection so uh, many times mother may ask whether i can breastfeed uh, yes she can breastfeed even if she has 
cold, cough, diarrhea, you know, any of those infection. Okay, even in HIV, actually, mother can breastfeed. Okay, all right. Uh, then you have these are all enzymes. So enzymes are your, you know, your uh, en uh, antitrypsin and histaminase. These are all enzymes which digest. Uh, your you know your food and it, it is helping in a uh, lot of biochemical reactions okay uh, these are all your hormones so you have your t3 t4 tsh you know all all those different prostaglandin cholecystokinin cortisol insulin so mother's milk has all this uh, uh, you know hormones leptin uh, uh, again very very important uh, for uh, for the baby okay here what you have in this section you have uh, kind of growth hormone kind of factors you know so it has uh, uh, you know gcsf it has uh, you know calcitonin it has like all these other uh, kind of hormones insulin like growth factors it's all again uh, you know uh, kind of uh, ingredient which are required for growth okay uh, then you have over here all the vitamins so basically all your fat soluble vitamin and water soluble vitamin remember if vitamins are low in mother then those mothers will have less vitamin in their breast milk okay uh, vitamin is your type 1 nutrient so any type 1 nutrient which is lacking in mother will be lacking in uh, breast milk also uh, this one also has minerals so you have your zinc iodine all that potassium magnesium you know so type 2 mic micronutrient will not uh, kind of you know change so much if mother is lacking because those micronutrients will come from cells will come from muscle tissue okay so that that remember the type 2 micronutrient does not change in breast milk then you have something called uh, nucleotides okay so these are your nucleotides uh, very important uh, in formation of dna you know in repair of dna uh, uh, kind of making new cells so these are all your nucleotides which are present in mother's milk okay so there is nothing that you can compare uh, to mother's milk the best nature's gift to baby really so please make sure that each and every mother get this information we have a very good tutorial on importance of breastfeeding complications of formulas and cow milk you know uh, if you have any family member who is planning to become pregnant or who is pregnant you know uh, please kind of pass on this tutorial to them it's uh, it's crucial that uh, mother and the family listen to you know what science has to say okay and once they understand this then i would uh, recommend that they watch those uh, you know uh, technique tutorial you know the art of breastfeeding with this that's that's another thing which is which is kind of you know you have to pass through that hurdle okay because many mothers give up too soon you know because of the poor technicality okay for poor understanding of the techniques okay so uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, science of breast milk uh, so you know uh, breast milk has a lot of different factors of course most important is your nutrition right it's optimum in, uh, nutrition for an infant okay they don't need anything except probably vitamin d um, it is optimal food for health growth and development of the infant uh, it's not only beneficial to infant but also to mothers okay what are the uh, advantages of breastfeeding so basically it has nutritional factors it has immunological factors it has psychological factors economical factors and physiological factors okay now this is the uh, table which uh, shows the composition human milk composition it is compared to cow milk and buffalo milk okay so if you look at uh, comparison so this is your protein so protein is lowest in human milk but is highly digestible okay very easily digestible cow milk protein is predominantly casein casein protein is really hard you know very heavy it's the same protein basically when you uh, make paneer out of milk you know so that casein that paneer is casein and whatever water is left behind that's whey okay uh, just make sure when you make paneer at home don't throw away that whey you know just use it in either rice, making rice or dal or whatever you make you know um, and buffalo milk has 4.3 uh, grams of protein so buffalo milk has the highest um, highest uh, protein okay uh, carbohydrate basically uh, highest in uh, human milk okay uh, fats highest in buffalo milk uh, 6.5 grams 
per 100 ml. Uh, calcium, you can see, look at the amount of calcium, you know, cow milk and then buffalo milk, uh, some of the highest amount. Uh, phosphorus again is increasing, okay, uh, not necessarily good for uh, baby uh, in a so much high amount. And um, basically, vitamin C is high in human milk, okay. So, this is just a main difference basically between human milk, cow milk and buffalo milk. Uh, this is what I spoke about that protein is low in human milk, uh, you know, kind of high in cow and goat here, they have given goat. So protein is kind of, uh, you know, pretty much a uh, little bit lower than cow, but higher than human milk. Uh, lactose, as, you, as I told you earlier also, lactose is higher in human milk, uh, kind of a little bit less in cow and goat milk. But goat milk has a high amount of fat. As you can see, goat milk is very fatty. Okay. This is the difference between formal milk and hind milk, okay? Now, if you look at mature milk, mature milk comes in, say, uh, on around day three, you have a transition milk, and uh, after about a week or so, then a mature milk comes in. So, when the mature milk comes in, the front part of the milk, okay, which is in the front part of the breast, it's formal milk, and that's kind of a little bit watery, and it has kind of good amount of protein. But the fat, fat is not much in form milk, as you can see over here, the fat is not much, okay. Hind milk, the back part of the milk, okay, that is much higher in fat. So babies who drink much more or baby completely empties one breast, uh, those babies kind of tend to do well, not only in terms of weight, but also in IQ, because fat is again very high in uh, omega-3, omega, you know, your uh, DHAPA. Okay, so make sure that you completely empty your breast and then go on the other side. And when you completely empty, you know, you want to do objective examination by looking at press the breast. You know, I'll show you in my one tutorial how to express manually, you know. Uh, but there is a technique to it, so you learn it. Okay, you make sure that there is no hind milk left, then you go on the other side. Okay, colostrum is basically your fat, uh, colostrum is very fatty. And it's high amount of protein okay so you can see compared to mature milk uh, look at the amount of fat it has amount of protein because it's so much it's a very small quantity that the babies get in the beginning the mothers produce uh, so it's very kind of calorie dense okay and a lot of time you know initially first couple of days you know baby tend to sleep more do not worry about it you know it's, it's okay because it has good amount of fat and protein okay so that is about colostrum. Uh, in one of our tutorial, we have given how much colostrum uh, mothers get, you know, on day one, day two, day three, day four. It's important to un understand that because many times mother feel that, oh, I'm not getting milk, I'm not getting milk. But they need to know that there is only some amount of milk that they'll get. Okay. Carbohydrate human milk is the sweetest milk due to high amount of lactose. Lactose, which is present in higher level in human milk facilitate the absorption of magnesium, calcium and amino acids, okay. So that lactose is really important in mother's milk. Uh, the high content of gal galactolipids promote rapid brain growth also. So it's important for brain growth. And galactose, which is milk sugar present in milk, is essential for formation of myelin, okay, which is important for the normal function of function. Myelin is the uh, sheet which covers the nerve, nerve. You know, neuron cells. Uh, so galactose is really important. It gives uh, you know uh, immediate energy to the baby. Okay. Uh, next is your macro protein. Protein is present in the form of lactoalbumin. Okay, that's your milk protein, which forms a soft curd. So many times you see when the baby finish feeding, they will have a little bit of uh, cuddling. You know, like a cuddle. Uh, the milk cuddles, uh, and that's uh, that's your lactoalbumin. And um, this lactobin is very easily digestible and absorbed by infant very fast. So it's uh, it's predominantly a whey protein. Okay, uh, human milk is rich in sulfur. Now you know, of course, in my previous session I discussed about sulfur. Uh, uh, again, crucial for liver, crucial for you know brain development systems, important for brain development. Um, so just make sure that babies get uh, a human milk okay uh, it is also rich in uh, amino acid called taurine uh, and taurine is a very important neurotransmitter 
okay we are just discussing very kind of short i don't want to go too much in detail because you know we have uh, kind of people from different backgrounds so i don't want to go too much in that medical aspect of uh, or nutrition and dietitian or nutrition aspect of uh, breast milk uh, you know but we have explained in a very simple way in our tutorials um, now this is the difference of quality of protein in different milk so here if you look at it human milk has predominantly whey protein 35% uh, casein over here cow milk has 80% casein casein is the you know paneer okay um, so definitely when children have cow milk it's very difficult to digest they tend to have lot more vomiting bloating you know stomach upset babies who are breastfed they are generally very quiet you know unless they have colic okay uh, but otherwise they are they are pretty happy babies now let's talk about fats so fats in uh, present in human milk are essential fatty acids they also have cholesterol unsaturated fatty acids and phospholipids okay so cholesterol is one of the most important uh, you know nutrient which are required for brain formation uh, and for brain function and for uh, myelin you know myelin synthesis so please you know uh, make sure that you kind of give your milk okay and cholesterol is not bad uh infants have very limited ability to convert alpha linolenic acid to epa dh that means what what it means that some of the vegetable oils like flax seeds oil walnut oil you know some of this uh, uh, vegetable oils have omega 3 but which omega 3 alpha linolenic acid okay only 4 to 10% of this alpha linolenic acid gets converted to uh, you know your epa dh okay now young children young babies they don't have ability to convert this ala into epa dh okay so even if suppose they are not drinking mother's milk and if they are taking say cow milk or formula you know uh, formulas doesn't have epa dh they claim that they have added epa dh but studies have not conclusive that that helps with the child's iq okay so uh, best way to make your child uh, intelligent is to just give your own milk there are other fats in uh, mother's uh, milk uh, acetylcholine choline phospholipids carnitine these are all basically uh, very important for brain development okay so fat is one of the most important uh, kind of macro in mother's milk then let's talk about minerals a mineral is basically you know your sodium potassium magnesium zinc those are all your mineral okay uh, breast milk has a low level of iron but is very highly bioavailable because of the presence of lactoalbumin and lactoferrin okay which enhances iron absorption calcium to phosphorus ratio is 2 is to 1 which helps in its ideal position okay absorption sorry uh, zinc absorption is also better from breast milk due to presence of zinc binding protein in breast milk okay so all these minerals are there and they are in a very good bioavailable bioavailable state so it's easy to absorb from breast milk okay similar kind of uh, suppose iron was present in cow's milk but cow milk iron is not bioavailable uh, bioavailable so even if it it may anyway cow milk is not uh, high in iron anyway uh, but whatever iron is there you know it's the bioavailability is very very poor okay vitamins are the vitamin content of human milk generally reflects a vitamin intake and nutritional status of the mother now this is why i already explained that if mother is deficient on those vitamins then a baby will have vitamin deficiency too so for example most common deficiency which mother has is your vitamin d okay so make sure that uh, babies they get vitamin uh, supplements or at least they exposed to the sun okay protection against infection so mother is infected okay i already explained to you what happens when the mother is infected her immunity goes up okay and her immunity basically passes on to the baby uh, through breast milk okay so that's important that uh, you know uh, mother continue to breastfeed even if she has uh, viral infection or any other bacterial infections too okay. living substance with unique component that cannot be replicated in infant formula i keep reiterating this you know, and i cannot say enough uh, its impact on brain development immunity is unparalleled it is a personalized medicine for your baby okay 
very very crucial very important please let mothers know okay it's a personalized medicine it's a foundation of baby's health if if breastfeeding kind of not given uh, in first at least minimum in first uh, one day or so you know as i mentioned about the golden hour uh, then the lifelong repercussion uh, is bound to happen okay so to prevent from lot of infections lot of other uh, conditions you know diseases make sure the children get uh, your milk right away and continue to get milk as long as you can you can give it okay uh, what are the immunological factors immunological factors are present in colostrum as well as in the milk okay macrophages are those big cells okay i mentioned to you they engulf and digest bacteria okay and uh, thus the bacteria and the viruses responsible for disease can be destroyed in this way okay Uh, second one is your lymphocytes those are your white cells lymphocytes are the white blood cells responsible for attacking wide range of infectious organism human milk contain t cells and b cells okay t t lymphocytes offer protection against malaria what is lactoferrin lactoferrin is a iron containing protein found both in colostrum and mature milk okay uh, this is again another important uh, ingredient that i want you to remember lactoferrin what it does it inhibits the growth of certain iron dependent bacteria in the gi tract okay and therefore it affords protection against gi infections okay so that's why lactoferrin is really important because it will prevent la, uh, diarrhea especially you know all gi infections uh, also basically uh, it's iron binding iron containing protein okay Uh, lactobacillus bifidus factor okay so basically this particular factor is present in human milk okay and it has lot of function what are the function it has it encourages the growth of certain microorganism like lactobacillus bifidus okay and that's why it's called lacto lactobacillus bifidus factor okay because it it kind of stimulates the growth of this uh, organism and it produces lactic acid okay lactic lactic acid is produced from what from lactose which is your milk sugar okay and what it does what does this lactic acid do it depresses the growth of diseases producing organism like e coli so there are certain organism which are pathogenic means which causes disease so this particular lactic acid will prevent the growth of those disease producing uh, pathogens or the disease producing organisms okay uh, growth of lactobacillus bifidus is enhanced on high lactose and low protein ratio present in human milk okay so why does how does this growth of uh, lactobacillus bifidus occur because of the high lactose in milk and also low protein ratio in uh, uh, human milk okay so your your sugar to protein ratio is low immunological factor so enzymes breast milk supplies enzymes like amylase lipoprotein lipase lact- lacto peroxidase there's a lot of other enzymes which i showed in the diagram okay this enzyme what it does increases digestibility and act as a defense against microbes okay so there is another factor of immunological this thing immunoglobulins immunoglobulins are the defensive protein secretory iga igg igm are present in human milk fatty acids and monoglycerides fatty acid and monoglycerides present in human milk are able to penetrate the members of viruses and bacteria and destroy them okay so um, again very important uh, fatty acids and monoglycerides which are your fats okay so breast milk builds immunity and modulates the gene expression which is a fine tune for life okay it's basically a gene modulator okay uh, i would say gene expression modulator not the gene modulator gene expression what does it mean is like for example uh, when it's it's basically kind of i would say epigenetic factor epigenetic means it will not change the genes but it will change the environment around the gene so uh, gene will express in a good way okay so the gene expresses like gene expresses like for example if you if somebody has diabetes okay and say if nobody in the family has and that person has diabetes so basically what it means that there are Prob- the problems in the epigenetic factors means something that went wrong in the environment that that he expressed uh, diabetes okay the gene expressed diabetes or gene modulation there is a gene expression uh, modulate modulated 
and that's how he developed diabetes so that is your epigenetic factors okay gene by itself does not change that gene change changes are basically occurring in mutation you know when you have a mutation when you have a uh, like something like cancer then your gene changes but otherwise most of this diseases which are uh, lifestyle diseases are because not because of genetics it because of the epigenetics it's the environment around that person which makes that person get diseases okay so there are a lot of diseases that now insulin resistant is one of the biggest uh, kind of root cause that they have found which causes diabetes blood pressure and all different kind of diseases okay so here i'm going to talk about now how breastfeeding works because uh, uh, unless we understand the uh, physiology about anatomy we won't understand how breast milk is produced and you know what exactly happens okay so here we will discuss about that the cells it causes basically uh, kind of you know contraction of the cells and the milk uh, kind of flows out okay so that's important there you go and when does it work it works before or during feed to make milk flow so uh, many times what happens is you know if mother is pumping with the pump okay and she will realize that she's just not getting milk she's not getting milk you know it's she will get maybe two teaspoon or three teaspoon and mostly that is because she has not gotten the letdown reflex and she will immediately know if she got the letdown reflex uh, by certain uh, signs and symptoms which i'll explain to you later but uh, remember that the letdown reflex is very very important and for that mother has to be in a very good state of mind okay if she is happy if she is confident if she is relax you know she will definitely have let down reflex but if she is not uh, kind of into it she is in pain she is worried she is stressed she is in doubt she is sad you know let down reflex will not happen and when you don't have let down reflex the cells do not contract when the cells do not contract the milk does not come uh, into the areola okay so uh, that's why I just keep mother happy let her relax tell her to go out for a walk you know not to get too worked up she has to rest drink water eat proper food you know and then of course relax and uh, meditate i think i really uh, recommend mothers to meditate because that relaxes them a lot okay now what are the signs and symptoms of oxytocin release so most of the time at least in first few weeks or so what happens she feels that suddenly there is a tingling sensation in her breast and just before when she's trying to feed or when she's full or when she's thinking of the baby even at work she will suddenly feel the tingling sensation and the milk will start flowing okay so that is kind of very typical sign of uh, oxytocin release but uh, you know you won't see that kind of oxytocin release um you know after a couple of months or so so many times she says, she feels oh my god now i'm not getting that uh, tingling sensation what happened you know so it's very kind of obvious in first couple of months or so uh then what happens at uh, you know of course when she's feeding the baby on one side the other side drips that is also a sign of oxytocin release that you know uh, she's she's pushing that milk out basically you know the the breast is pushing that milk out okay uh and when milk uh, when mother suppose baby comes off the breast suddenly what she sees is like the milk flowing it's like a you know spray coming out of the breast and that's that's amazing actually there's so much of milk coming out you know uh, and that's the importance of let down reflex that baby will not have to work too hard you know it just milk just flows okay because of oxytocin uh, then you know in early days uh, because of oxytocin there is like a pain from uterine contraction and this there is a rush of blood during this feed in the first week okay uh, and slow deep sucks and swallowing by the baby which shows the breast milk is flowing into his mouth so when you look at baby's mouth you know they'll have slow suck and they'll have really good uh, you know suck and then swallow suck and swallow okay uh, few suck and then swallow so uh, that's another way but again you know uh, it's it's very common in first couple of months or so you know and then mothers no baby is no so then it kind of decreases you know and that sensation so um, this is my last slide uh, this what happens if mothers don't breastfeed or for some reason she is breastfeeding very infrequently okay or if baby is sick and baby mother is not uh, baby is not sucking 
then some amount of milk stays into the breast okay those are called uh, milk inhibitor factor mif okay these are inhibitors it stays in the breast okay and basically it tells the breast that you know milk is not uh, needed you know stop producing milk okay and that's how basically slowly slowly milk dries up okay and it will uh, stop producing milk so this is your uh, you know milk inhibiting factor okay